Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Gluck Day. This is actually the last day of Gluck. Um, today, uh, uh, Valpo Smash Bros team actually has a double header. Um, first, we're going against Mount Union. So, very excited. Um, my name is Aubrey or Era. I'm Cheetah Quick Nine, and yes, it is our last day on Gleck, but we do have a double header for you. So this isn't the last stream we're gonna have today. We will be streaming that a little later afterwards. So yes, but I will not be here, so maybe we can see <laughs> some interesting commentary. <laughs> it, it's gonna be a good time, but it might be a little scuffed. But it's gonna be funny. <laughs> the you might get yourself banned <laughs> off commentary. It's gonna be funny though. But if you get yourself banned off commentary... Okay, but if I get myself banned off commentary, that means I did something real funny. <laughs> yeah. You're, like, on your last legs with Mike anyway. Um, we are doing some <laughs> lovely stage bands. We're pretty sure we know who we're sending in. Yep, I do believe we are sending in Chris first, but... Um... I heard Alex. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I think it was actually Chris first for our later match today, I believe is what I heard, actually. So. Yeah, because... It, it very well might be Alex. Um, so this Mountain Union, um, I believe, is Min Min Sora someone. Pikachu, I think. Pikachu. I think it's Pikachu. Yeah, so we're going to have some fun with that one. <laughs> Um, these are generally characters that can be really annoying to play against. Min Min, because yes. of her extreme range, is annoying as heck if you don't have range to contest it, mm -hmm. which some of us don't. Um, and then Sora is extremely floaty, has large hitboxes that last for a long time. He's actually very similar to Pit in that, in a lot of senses, uh, that being one of them. And then Pikachu. We all know Pikachu. Yeah, I don't think I need to elaborate much on that one. But, <laughs> um, so we're going to have some fun with that one. To elaborate, Pikachu is small, quick, and fast. Very fast. He is small, so he is extremely hard to hit. Um, it's included, especially with his pancaking, which is a term specifically created just because of Pikachu's, <laughs> Pikachu's crap. That is because of him. <laughs> but he is extremely hard to hit because he is so small. He is also so fast. And he has incredible combo game for being such a small character. So he's really good damage output and kill power. So mm -hmm. Pikachu is really annoying to go against. And uh, you guys will get to be able to see it right away as Alex has to go into Pika Libre. Um, I believe uh, we're on... Oh, yep. shoot. Smashville. My... Smashville. We are like, on Smashville. I kept thinking town and city, but they're... Yep, they, they do look quite similar. Uh, <laughs> until like the platforms come in, it can be kind of yes. difficult to tell. But the, this matchup is going to be really kind of... Really dependent on who can control the stage. Mm -hmm. Alex's projectiles on Smashville being such a small stage is going to cover a lot of space. But so is T-Jolt's. And using yes. Link's sword is going to be difficult to land. You already have to be pretty precise with his sword moves. So it can be quite difficult to hit. But mm -hmm. Link does have Nair. And Nair does go through T-Jolt's. Yes. Um, so far, uh, uh, Alex was struggling for a bit. Um, mainly just because the Pikachu is getting... <laughs> Yep, but is managing to keep it quite even, is at a slight percent deficit, but Link does do quite a bit more damage per hit than Pikachu does. Pikachu really relies on those combos, being such a fast and combo heavy character, which they do have a lot of options into them, like this back air, but didn't get much off of it, and did allow Alex to get back to stage for free with that little bit of upbeat. Yep, uh, no punish there, and just using the boomerang to just kind of stun is really what Alex is going to need. Um, he doesn't want to go in. He wants that Pikachu to definitely go towards him as much as possible. Yep, he really wants to be able to take center stage and set up with those projectiles, forcing the Pikachu to come to him when trying to maneuver through that minefield that his projectiles can create. And we see him doing quite a bit of good use of that, trying to keep center stage. shoot. Pikachu coming towards him, but did just barely get through his minefield of projectiles to get a grab and no edge guard did get the stage spike but pikachu's upbeat is extremely good it has two charges although each charge does have to be at a different direction in case you didn't know they can't do two charges in one direction but then it also has a hitbox on it uh which is different from pichu's pichu's does not have one but pikachu's quick b uh, quick attack up b hitbox is very good it is extremely quick and 
easy damage, but that forward smash is going to be able to kill. That isn't quick easy damage, but it will kill. Yep, it is unfortunate for Alex immediately going into a deficit against the stock me. He does have to attack the Pikachu first and can't just let the Pikachu come to him all the time. And there is an example of that uh, Pikachu up B being really solid to just kind of throw out. It is extremely quick as it has quick attack in the name. But did get punished with an upbeat out of shield from Alex. Does take the stock. 65% in a deficit, but that's pretty much just one or two combos for Pikachu. And Link can make that back of a good advantage state. So this is not down and out yet. Yes, we still have um, quite a fair amount. I'm not sure exactly if the Pikachu is one of their best players. Uh, I believe it is their best, if I recall correctly. And Alex is holding his own against it, which is really good to see. It is a difficult matchup, as we said. You have to be extremely precise, but he is holding his own against it quite well, which is really good to see. Yes, we are um, just kind of... Um, Alex is just really looking for those openings. And this Pikachu is doing a very good job at trying to not give him those openings. <laughs> yep, this Pikachu is doing a really good job of maneuvering around Alex's traps and pressure, so that is really nice to see, but also Alex isn't really getting hit by the Pikachu. He's doing a good job of avoiding Alex's pressure, but he's not applying a huge amount of his own, so we are just in the feel-out stage a little bit, but Pikachu does get these stray hits pretty easily in that forward smash Luger for so long is going to catch Alex and take the stock. Yep, that does take a stock. Um, we are seeing, um, just trying to use that bomb. He is, it might just be a little more rusty with some of his bomb things. No, it, it's just extremely hard to hit on Pikachu. Such a small character, such a fast character. It is extremely hard to even get the space to pull it, let alone being able to get them to connect, but almost taking the stock of that up smash, but not quite, not quite enough percent or charge on that up smash take it but is in a good position tries to read a roll but just barely missing actually so up the out of shield does get weak hit man alex is just getting the most unlucky kill moves he's so close to killing of yeah. every single thing this is just unfortunate for alex um, he's uh, like slightly out of it and just missing but it is smashville and pikachu is at 150 smashville being such a small stage it is going to be a lot easier to find a kill judging how light pikachu is Man, Alex, can you, like, stop getting unlucky, please? This is supposed to be my job. I'm supposed to be the unlucky one? There you go. Nair goes through the goes through the T-Jolt, does get the kill. At a decent amount of percent, this is a quite a significant deficit. Last stock wasn't too terrible, but this is getting a little out of hand. But did manage to get the stock no matter what, and he is dead here. Yeah, but did manage to get the stock, and that is what matters. Yes, that is what matters. Um because we can take an assumption that either Chris or Keegan will be able to clean up uh, quite a bit. Yep, either one of Chris or Keegan. I think it depends on which character Chris goes, because we never know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is a fact. We, we never know what character he could send in. And it's a fun time, honestly. It, it's, it's just a game. And we actually know always before everyone else does. And we still don't know. <laughs> but Pikachu is a fairly difficult matchup for basically our entire yes. roster. So Alex taking two stocks there. Although he did lose his three, that is really good to see. And as we talked about before, I believe that that is their best player that mm -hmm. we know of. I do believe. So being able to take two stocks of only three in a bad matchup, being their best player, that is actually pretty good. Yes. So that is a good spot to be in while we are down one stock. Now, personally, from what I'm thinking, just because I believe um, Chris has done um, Captain Falcon into another Sora that we have previously faced. Mm -hmm. um, I think if I remember correctly, there was a two week spring break, but um, I believe he did pretty well against that. I believe so. He's also played Falcon into this specific Sora, I do believe. And, of course, Chris is competent on the Falcon, even if it is a bad matchup. That doesn't mean he can't fight through it, so... Yes. Bad matchups just mean you're at a slight disadvantage. Doesn't mean you can't play through it, so... Chris, being the good player that he is, it is definitely a possibility that we just see him go in and just win, and we're like, oh, yeah, maybe it is a bad matchup. <laughs> so, it is yeah. definitely a possibility. Yeah. Um, the only thing I would be a little bit more nervous about, Jess, is just the Min Min, just because of her range, and... <laughs> Spoiler alert, Captain Falcon is a brawling character. 
<laughs> Captain Falcon that uses his legs doesn't have much range? Yo! It's shocking, I know. <laughs> Insane. But, yeah, that, that Min Min is going to be actually quite difficult to face into. Although we were saying that the Pikachu is probably their best player, Min Min is just such a rough matchup for both of these characters that we have left. Min Min really challenges uh, Samus because she can challenge her range from really far away that yes. aren't disjoints. And fun fact, Min Min up smash is also a reflector. <laughs> Yes. Because sure, why not? So DLC character moment. So yeah, they just decided, you know what? She needs a reflector. Yeah, I might do it in their base game, but that's weird. <laughs> I mean, we need DLC characters to have DLC character moments. Yeah, it, it's because it does reflect arms in her base game. So I understand why that got brought over. It's just <laughs> weird to see Min Min just kick a charge shot and just go back. Same with Kazuya. Like, they're, they're just kicking it. They're kicking charge shot, just plasma like a soccer ball. What even? I yeah. want to do that. <laughs> but do it. Why can't I do that? <laughs> All right, make a charge shot then. Then I'll kick it. <laughs> well, well see I it can't. We have to ask Keegan. <laughs> Keegan's the one who can make charge shots, apparently. That is true. He does. He is the Samus player. But Min Min is going to be really challenging for the Samus, as we talked about, and then Captain Falcon because of the sheer amount of range. So mm -hmm. is going to be quite dangerous there. Yes. So we are... Ready? All right, we are officially seeing the lovely Keegan going in. We are indeed. You guys will be in for an interesting time. It, yes. it is going to be difficult to watch um, against Pikachu because it is quite a bad matchup. But seeing how Keegan plays around it is going to be important here. So going to town and city, that is actually pretty good for Keegan. Uh, the, the, why he counterpicked here gives him a lot of space to move and maneuver around. A lot of area to basically just disengage from the Pikachu because the Pikachu could really press his advantage just because of how slow Samus can be in that disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we are here seeing that with um, Pikachu getting his first combo off with 21 HP, losing, was, with Keegan losing 20, 21 HP. Yep, but <clears throat> at least he didn't get his full combo as at zero that back air can true combo into another back air into another back air and that could basically loop for about five different times especially on town and city being such a long stage if he gets that right at the edge it could be big damage but keegan does manage to avoid it is at a little bit of a deficit but the sh sheer kill power deficit between Samus and Pikachu. While Pikachu has a lot of combos, Samus has a lot more kill power mm -hmm. on Town and City as well. So this is a little more even than it might look. Yes. Um, Pikachu, being such a small and a much weaker character, has to kill at a much higher percentage than Samus does. Yep. To, for Pikachu to kill at the percentage that Samus can reliably kill at, it does require some setups or reads, so it can be quite dangerous. The one thing we're seeing here is that while this amount of space is beneficial to Keegan to, to be able to disengage, Pikachu's T-Jolts cover so much of the stage. They are such a good projectile. Mm -hmm. But as we see there, an example of charge shot, if Keegan charges the charge shot high enough, uh, has the charge shot charged enough and isn't big enough, it will actually go through Tejal. So that's actually really good in this matchup as we see Keegan taking advantage of that. So really yeah. nice way to kind of lessen Pikachu's pressure since Tejal is such a good pressure tool. Mm -hmm. Amazing patience on Keegan for the up B. Um, just, um, just waiting for every moment. Nice call out. Nice call out. We saw the Pikachu being really defensive there, crouching uh, tra crouching under missiles, trying to shield, inching forward and shield, and Keegan saying, you're scared. And then calling out a jump as that Pikachu is jumping out a lot, approaching of aerial. So calling that out with a charge shot, really nice way to get the kill. Doesn't lose a stock there, so we have back to even. Yeah, one of the craziest things about Keegan is he is so easily able to manage his cool and just stay patient keep focus on the game i honestly i admire it because yep and, and that comes with the character samus really requires patience there she is a, she's notoriously quite a slower character although keegan mm -hmm. might make it look a little faster <laughs> of a character he does play a little more aggro of a samus but he still is playing samus so he does understand that sometimes you can't play aggro so being able to keep his cool there is really important and and as you said it is really good quality of him and it works well with his character so Mm -hmm. It is nice to see. Um, honestly, I'm going to say this right now. I think they're going to send in the Sora. Mainly just because Min Min is such, feels like such a better counter, in my opinion, to um, Captain Falcon. 
That is true. Um, Min Min is also good against Samus, so really I could see either one. I could yeah. see the Min Min or the Sora. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if either one, I don't. I don't know the preference. It might be more on their end player-wise preference that we don't uh, that we don't have insight on. But oh, it's Tristan. He subscribed oh, no. again. Oh no, Tristan's watching. No. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> Are you scared of Tristan now? I'm scared of Xenoblade rants. <laughs> don't play a Xenoblade character, please. <laughs> Well, we know they're not going to play a Xenoblade That is character. true. We do know that they do not have a Xenoblade character on there, so... I sh we should be safe, guys. We should be good. <laughs> Says the guy who we are not safe from. Yes. Um... <laughs> We, lo we gotta love these stage bands. <laughs> yeah, st stage bands is a little bit entertaining. It when when you're in the room, it doesn't feel like it takes this long, as you are talking in between, talking amongst ourselves as well, deciding. But on the outside, it is just a little bit of a gap. But you know, we're having a good time here. We we do just be kind of vibing. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, uh, Keegan's probably thinking just kind of going for a simple stage, um, just because I'm assuming both Sora and um, Min Min are looking for the same type of stage, or no? Um, generally, they're fairly similar, and Samus also kind of wants that size, although ah. I was actually talking with Keegan yesterday. Um, he was down here playing online, and I, was, I just decided to stay down here talking with him. But you're saying that sometimes against those characters that are really good uh, counter camp characters, you actually want smaller stages. I think we because, were um, wrong about the men. men. Correct. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, apparently, I may have been uh, incorrect. Well, I didn't know the I didn't know their characters, guys. It's a new concept for here. I, I always know the characters. I heard. Hey, don't check. I heard a <laughs> list of like three di uh, three different sets of characters today, and I just. Yep, got and them we have two matches. So uh, which one is it? We'll never know. <laughs> um, so Squirtle, um, if you don't know, is um, Pokemon Trainer has three different characters. Squirtle being the lightest and fastest. Ivysaur kind of being a middle ground, and Charizard being very heavy and mostly used for killing and recovery. <laughs> yep. Pokemon Trainer is a three-in-one combo. They are a bit of a value deal there, but that does not mean you can count them out. These three characters on their own are pretty much high tiers, so putting all three together really makes them a strong character. But here's what they don't realize. Keegan is extremely good at the PT matchup. He has played against, if you guys know this name, um, Keegan has played against Beast a lot, and Beast is one of the top Pokemon trainers. If not the best, I'm not sure. I don't know too much about Pokemon trainers, so don't quote me there. But Beast is extremely good, has played a lot and played very well, and Keegan is very good at the matchup because of it. So this is going to be very difficult for this PT to get anything done. Keegan is very experienced here. Yeah, the main thing this Charizard is um, really struggling with is the only reason why he lived for so long is just because of how heavy he was. Um, yep, Charizard is quite thick, but it also makes him easier to hit as while he is, he is larger, so he's heavier. He's larger, so he's also a bigger target, and Keegan taking advantage of that. That does get the switch out, which that switch, um, similar to Pyramithras as well, they do the same thing. They actually get some uh, intangibility frames in the middle of it, just so they have that swapping bit. Um, so, does manage to swap out of the combo, but Keegan manages to extend his advantage through it anyway. Ooh, just barely gets the Flame Blitz caught on the side of the stage. If you guys don't know, that move, uh, Charizard Side B, that just hit the side of the stage there, called Flame Blitz. It actually is extremely strong, but does do some self-damage, some recoil damage. So, missing that is really not ideal. <laughs> does die anyway, and Keegan goes for the down air. Can't add that to the miss, but didn't spike. Keegan is uh, showing his experience here. He is very good at this matchup, as I said before. Yes. So showing um, that is very well. Yeah, quite a lot. Not having lose, lost a single stock, being with Pokemon Trainer being on their last stock, um, seems like they're most comfortable on Charizard. I feel like that's more of just Keegan forcing him to go into the Charizard just because Keegan is keeping his advantage and bringing him to such high percent so quickly. I don't think he wants to be on Charizard, but he is, Keegan is just forcing him to. It is very true as well. Um, 
However, this Charizard is at max range, dealing uh, significant amounts of damage. Um, but the problem is, um, he's very close to being killed by a lot of Samus's moveset. Yeah, and this should be uh, not quite dead. Samus's up smash is a bit suspect of whether he's going to connect the entire way there, so it just does miss. It's like most up smash. And uh, think about what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> Keegan, don't. <laughs> yeah, Keegan showing his experience in that matchup, as we said before. He has played against some top PT, so he is very experienced in that matchup. Gonna be difficult for that PT to be able to get through him. Mm -hmm. Um, Chris might not have to play the game, and I'm sure he's quite happy about that. That would be his best, that would be his most favorable outcome for him. Yes, it would. He would definitely enjoy that the most, I feel. Um, but chances are, uh, next round he most certainly will go in. Eh, maybe. <laughs> uh, I do believe we are re leading him uh, next match that we have after this for a double header. Mm -hmm. Tune in for that one. Hey -o. Where he will go on three minute pit rampages. <laughs> no, he can go on three minute pit rampages because it's on the other team. I in here will go on three minute pit rants. That's what the. I'm just hungry and tired. <laughs> it is pretty early. Yeah, it is nine, and we all had to wake up earlier to be here. So. We're yeah. tired. We're co we're also college students. That doesn't help. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So it, it's just a fun time, though. So we are exhausted, but we're also having fun. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Trust me, I would not be here if I was not having fun. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> but hey, you get to go on pit ramps later. I do get to go on pit ramps. Even if it's not on camera, you get to do it to uh, either Chris, Keegan, Alex. <laughs> The entire team, to be whoever fair, listens. To be fair, I go on pit rants to them anyway. Fair enough. Although most of the time is complaining about the character. It's, it's <laughs> also not talking been, about how to beat it. It's also been very interesting from somebody who doesn't really understand um, a lot of things. Um, you just go on pit rants to me as well and just be like, so yes, Nair. <laughs> I'm just like... Nair do go burr. It certainly do. Yeah. I, I mean, three years of experience with one character does tend to lead to what could pro probably could be considered an unhealthy amount of knowledge about a certain character. But it does come in handy as someone who plays that character and being able to have intellectual conversations about it through either in person for the matchups, which is going to come in handy later today, or just online talking about the meta and stuff. It is It is quite nice being able to keep up with stuff like that. So... Having some in-depth knowledge about your character, although it can be quite silly to have just an exorbitant amount, it is quite handy, but seems like they are not going the Sora. Yeah, this is interesting. So, I feel like this is maybe, this is either, in my opinion, okay, this is what I feel. This is either a new player that mm -hmm. they picked up, or it is someone secondary, because Snake is a really good matchup against Go! Samus. Um, because the grenades are counted as items, so they actually beat out projectiles. That is how items are coded. They have priority over projectiles. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. But Chris is also pretty good at the snake matchup. He has talked to me about it before, mm -hmm. uh, as well as yesterday, as we were talking for a decent amount of time. We were, we were just down here hanging out and chilling. So he was telling me that he is actually not too bad at this matchup while it is bad for Samus. So... This is going to be kind of a challenge to try to get through. Yeah, so he and might struggle, but um, uh, Chris might not. So we'll see about that. Yeah. He he Egan is... might struggle, but his goal is to make the snake struggle as well. And oh man, that was such a good down throw of the grenade, bouncing it up to connect into that up air. See, Keegan is showing that while these grenades can be really good against a charge shot, which is important, this is uh, actually important against snake in every matchup mm -hmm. that you can throw them back throwing grenades back at snake is actually a really good idea and just against snake in general so. um, after that first uh, couple of hits from that snake and just losing um, that advantage snake um, he can still manage to take off one stock with the loveliness that is up B, um, by the end of the stage <laughs> yuppers <laughs> Um, and nice charge shot call out. 
Yeah, snakes often recover high. That is just a common trait of snakes. And Keegan calling that out there as even if that snake upbeat and uh, Cypher uh, snakes upbeat does have armor on it, but that high of charge of shot is going to break through it. So calling him out on not air dodging going below the stage, snake generally doesn't want to. So calling him out on that was such a good advantage. And calling him out again says snake. No. <laughs> um, taking only 11% in those last two stocks was absolutely crazy, especially against this um, bad ma um, bad matchup on like uh, Keegan's part. Mm -hmm. So Keegan is showing that uh, what we what we mentioned before, just because it's a bad matchup does not mean you can fight through it. Alex showcased that against the Pikachu of being quite a difficult matchup. Then Keegan showed against the Pikachu, and then showed it against the Snake there. So does get us the first round so going into the next round this is match points as it is a best of three so either Mount Union does manage to get the round or we win this we win the match we set. Um, so we will see um, who they bring out if they lead with Pikachu again it might be a good idea to bring in um, Keegan first I mean that's my opinion I'm not sure if you agree with that mm -hmm. or um, I think the Pikachu would probably be the best bet. The thing is, we don't know who they're going to lead, and we don't, and they don't know who we're going to lead. It looks like we will be doing the same as last round, but uh, this is Glex. So while in NECC, um, it is Blind Picks the first one, mm -hmm. but then we get to know the character afterwards. Mm -hmm. Glex doesn't. Glex is all three are Blind Picks, so we don't know what they're going to pick at any point. Mm -hmm. Well. We have some assumptions. Yep, we, we can make <laughs> guesses. We can make guesses. We can make educated guesses. We have seen the roster, and we know their past rosters. So we mm -hmm. can make educated guesses about what they're throwing in. But unlike NECC, we aren't just outright told. Yes. So. Um, it's not like they're going in with absolutely no information. They have some. <laughs> they have a few um, key bits of information, including their Navasora, um, a snake now, um, Pokemon trainer and uh, Pikachu. They know those four things and they can um, use what they want to try and com um, combat the, I don't even know where I'm going. Yep. I, they, I know they, where I'm going. Yep, but... They can use that to combat the matchups, think about where they want to go with it, think about who they want to throw in and where they might want to go and how they might want to counterplay those matchups. Yeah, basically what I was saying, except more coherent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is the advantage of doing your research in these matches. So, uh, as I was saying, like, as I said before, in NECC, mm -hmm. it, I mean, NECC and Glek both aren't told the first pick, but NECC afterwards are told that characters are coming in. Glek doesn't. So that is the advantage of doing your research on these teams. We can go and watch their streams. We can see what characters they can they play, mm -hmm. where they like to go, and how they like to play. So we can prepare ourselves, and they can do the same in turn. Mm -hmm. So that is where doing your research, seeing how you want to do things, and pre-planning can really be advantageous. Uh, I think we're leaning towards Pokemon Trainer. Or Pokemon, <laughs> Pokemon Trainer. Pokemon Stadium 2. I mean, they <laughs> might throw the, po the Pokemon Trainer. I mean, it's Pokemon Stadium 2. As we know, it hey, is... Hey, home field advantage. It's. I mean, they they might be expecting us to do the same thing as we did last time. So trying to avoid the Pokemon trainer going against Keegan, honestly, is not a bad idea. As Keegan is extremely experienced in that matchup, it could be very. Di it's going to be very difficult for that Pokemon trainer to get much done against Keegan. So, yes. uh, if they throw in the Pokemon trainer here first, just to try to avoid him, I would not actually be too terribly surprised or disagree mm -hmm. with that idea. Very Especially much. since we do have a habit of throwing in the exact same order very and we found here, the Sora. Yep, we found the Sora. So last last round we did not see the Sora. We saw Pikachu, Pokemon Trainer, and Snake. So, but here coming in is the Sora that we knew that they had beforehand. Um, so I wonder if this is a Snake player or is a separate player. I'm not sure about that. But either way, going into Alex, Alex Link against the Sora, but does get a little bit of um, immediate advantage state getting. Not very many combos, but just a lot of strings and a lot of damage out of it. Mm -hmm. Sora's finding it difficult to find that, to land that hit that Sora really needs to get the combos going. But here it is, and uh, yep. here's Sora. <laughs> <laughs> um, DLC character moments. Yeah, uh, Sora has a lot of combo games. Yeah. He 
he's quite simple to play um, at base level, just to just to make him fundamentally work. But to really get advanced in the combos, to really get those optimal combo routes and those uh, nair loops or noops as they're called, which is quite a silly little name. Uh, it actually can be quite technical to be on the advanced end of Sora. A lot of uh, almost frame perfect inputs to do these loops and tight maneuvering. So. While he can be simple to play at a fundamental level, it can be quite difficult to master. So we will see how well this Sora can do that. Um, unfortunately, that Sora missed two um, punish opportunities in a row. Uh, just, I think, miss inputs. Yep, but that does that is advantageous for us, so yeah. it's not great for the Sora. But as we saw there, um, Sora is extremely floaty and has an incredible recovery distance-wise. So he can really go out there and threaten Alex offstage a lot. It can be quite terrifying to recover against Sora, not even counting his use of spells that he can do. Oh man, that was so big! I don't know if you caught that, but he actually landed a drag down nair, but the drag down nair caught the bomb. So he threw the bomb upward instead of up smashing. Ooh. That would have been the stock. Oh, man. So that was actually um, very um, not planned by Alex, but very good. Very good interaction for Alex. Does manage to avoid losing the stock from that up smash, but does take another one. Does manage to land that combo striker again. No bomb to save him there, so does take the up smash, but this Sora is taking quite a bit of damage here. <laughs> And unfortunately, that Sora has decided, uh, no, I'm going to deal that damage also to you. Yep, Sora does have quite a pretty good combo game, as we were talking about before. Even even without the most technical combos, he can still output quite a bit of damage. His moves do a surprising amount of damage and knockback to what they look like. Uh, playing Sora, they feel almost weaker than they actually are. It's quite an interesting feeling. Yeah. Um, just looking at this, the Sora is man, um, just kind of struggling to get that first hit. But once they get that first hit, um, that's where everything, actually all of the damage comes in. Like you were just saying, uh, the smaller hits, they don't feel like they're doing a lot, but... Yep, they, they really add up a lot. And, um, as you can see, like, throughout this match, when the Sora is just kind of throwing out moves, trying to land that first hit, his Keyblade covers a lot of space. You, like, Nair and Fair are actually very similar hitbox wise, but you can really see it from up air and back air. It covers so much space. Just the, the wide swinging arc. It covers so much distance that Thunder is going to take the stock. Thunder is extremely good at killing. So, right at the edge there, does connect into the third. Sometimes, if you're a skinny character, which I believe Blink is skinny enough, as Pit is also skinny enough to do this sometimes, um, you can actually, if you get the positioning just perfect, you can go in between the hits of the Thunder, and it is really funny to watch, although it is extremely hard to do on purpose. Yeah, I think we saw him do that a little bit right there. I he has no jump, but uh, it's Sora, it doesn't matter, but that bomb is going to take it. Sora's recovery is extremely good distance-wise. But it can be exploited like that. Yes. Um, it, it had a little bit of a chance of making it back. The problem is that bomb uh, very much stopped that. <laughs> yep. Uh, Alex's use of the arrow there to cover that space is really good there because either that Sora jumped and it caught the jump as, it, as we saw in person. But if he didn't jump and he did decide to go low, that arrow would have gone completely unpunished. And Sora going that low is going to be hard for Link to cover anyway, so he wasn't losing anything by going for that arrow. Mm -hmm. But it did catch the jump, which really limited Sora's recovery options. But as we're talking about, that recovery goes so far by itself that, mm -hmm. that Sora could have gone low and made it back, but that would have given Alex even more time to set up, as Sora's recovery is also a bit slow. It yes. takes a while to get up there, so a lot mm -hmm. of setup time, a very difficult spot to be in, but... Alex just putting him out of his misery early with the bomb, just taking him out there and going into this round with one stock up, uh, except for as contrast to last time, we were actually a stock down, although it was against Pikachu. Yes, um, I think honestly they're probably going to bring in Pikachu for this next one, take, a, um, take what they're probably assuming is an easy stock, um, assuming Alex hasn't adapted, learned things, um, which um, you guys always are. 
Um, we've seen before, um, you went against Apollo last semester and um, uh, struggled the first round. And then suddenly the second round, you got some advice from somebody and you did significantly better. This is just kind of a thing um, that you guys have with the uh, breaks in between the rounds and matches. <clears throat> yep, that, that is part of being a Smash player. It is not all just pure execution and can you do the combos. There is a lot of mental game in it. Um, uh, fighting games are often called uh, mental games. They, While there is physical uh, inputs and execution and stuff, a lot of it is the thought process behind it. The reading your opponent, the trying to find your way in. So. Mm -hmm. The ability to be able to adapt to that, to figure out the patterns of your opponents, mm -hmm. is really important in here. And we're, I mean, we we are Smash players. We're not bad at it. And Chris, Keegan, and uh, Alex are one of the best that we have at it. And mm -hmm. We see the Pokemon trainer coming in to take the one stock off of Alex, but Alex is going to be attempting to stop that. <laughs> and also, even if he does take the one stock, he is not going to have a fun time against Keegan. Yeah, but that means it's fun for us. Uh, we are seeing a different um, color palette. I rarely see the guy Pokemon trainer. Really yeah, a, a, a lot of times it is just the color palette of the Pokemon, but I, I do agree. A lot of times people just... Um, I, I see the color palette for the female Pokemon trainer a lot more, but... Mm -hmm. I think it's something about the voice. I know, um, I knew a Pokemon main in the time, and they did not like Pokemon trainer and guy's voice. That's fair. Yep. I mean, that, that's one of the reasons I don't like Sora. <laughs> <laughs> he talks so much, and all of it's annoying. <laughs> I feel like Pit's kind of the same way, though. Shh. Don't let him. Don't tell them that. Don't let him know. <laughs> He's uh, just telling him to go away. <laughs> um. So the Ivysaur is um at a small lead, but they're both equal um equal damage right now. Just kind of um existing kind of just in neutral, just trading hits back and forth. Unfortunately. Yeah, I'm trying to find their opening, and Alex is trying to find his own. Trying to manage to take at least one stock and almost did multiple times with a few call-ups, but now has to deal with Charizard. Charizard, uh, while he is a heavy, he's actually not bad at racking up damage either. Mm -hmm. And he is not, he's, he's not all that slow. So, uh, I believe he has like a, he has like a frame six, like mm -hmm. up smash out of shield. And his out of shield options, you do not want to be above Charizard. He has insanely good options for that. Mm -hmm. We also don't want to be beside Charizard because <laughs> he has good options for that too. Uh, like pivot F tilt. Like we actually just saw they are not getting the sweet spot, but you know, being around Charizard is actually quite dangerous. He's a lot faster than you might think as just the stereotypical heavy. So where you don't want to be against Charizard. And this should be dead. Oh, didn't you could have just won a bounce smash, but that does take the stock anyway. Yes. Um, um we are seeing him throw an Ivysaur right away. Um I believe if I'm in, in not in craft um, Ivysaur is one of, um, is the better of the three? Uh, that, that comes down a, a lot to, uh, matchups and personal preference. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of times, uh, Pokemon trainers will generally have one of the three Pokemon that they're best with. That just kind of naturally happens. But mm -hmm. a lot of times it can be up to matchups of which one they play. And as you mentioned, they went straight to the Ivysaur. And I believe that's mostly because Ivysaur can kind of counter, counter camp, to say. And... Link being that kind of zoner-ish, keep out kind of character, um, having the Ivysaur to kind of play that same game and counteract that is going to be uh, better for them than trying to find their way in with Squirtle. So that would be a reasoning that they swap. But Alex has done a lot of damage here. Although it looks pretty even, remember that Alex has already taken one stock. So this is just that with the second one. And calls out the Flare Blitz. This, po this Pokemon trainer has been using Flare Blitz a lot to recover. So calls it out, takes another stock we are now up by a significant margin thanks Alex mm -hmm. um, and we are still on the first character Alex only taking 150% on this class um, last stock of course. yep and that and is that going to kill yep, that, that is such a stage. yep that is such a <laughs> dangerous position to be oh, in against oh, Ivysaur oh, uh, oh, Ivysaur's hitboxes are massive they are cover so much area and especially at that percent but even lower percent they kill 
quite well. So all of all those up airs that you saw Alex avoiding, all of those up Bs that you saw Alex avoiding, and all of the down airs until the the one that eventually spiked, all would have killed. Yeah. So uh, very good evasion from Alex to avoid that, but does get caught out with the down air uh, from ledge. Very hard to avoid that. That move is massive. Um, so there are two options we can throw in. We can throw in Keegan, um, which is very interesting because they are ending with their Pikachu, it seems like. Mm -hmm. um, it does seem like they are anchoring, yep. Um, which makes me wonder if they should, I think they might need to throw in Chris first, just because I feel like Samus just will be a little bit better against Pikachu. Um, well... Keegan did show himself to be able to be pretty good against the Pikachu, mm -hmm. but uh, at the same time, this Pokemon trainer, uh, as we mentioned before, Keegan is extremely good at the Pokemon matchup, but mm -hmm. there also is only one stock, but it does seem like we do have a plan. <laughs> um, and it's probably not going to be surprising to anyone who is returning to the stream of what our plan is, so... We are we, we get to see who we're throwing in before you guys, so we get a little sneak peek, so ha. <laughs> so. Well while, while they're doing stage vans <laughs> and we have to try and talk for a minute. Yep. Oh Or no, we just No, they they decided very quickly. Small battlefield. <laughs> I like small battlefield. Small battlefield is honestly my favorite legal stage out of them all. Um, Didn't pick music, so kind of a missed opportunity there for uh, some Xenoblade bangers. But going in with Keegan, for those of you returning, this is not that great of a surprise. Uh, we know that Keegan's good at the matchup, and we also know that Chris doesn't want to play this video game. <laughs> so not all that surprising of a development. But getting into this, uh, the PT does lose two of their stocks. Alex taking two of them with before losing his three. So very good to see so keegan keegan has already taken on this pt with his three socks and won pretty handedly because of his matchup experience so this pt having only one stock going into him now is going to be quite scary for him i am sure uh yeah i would assume so i mean genuinely if i was going against keegan in this video game, I would be scared anyway. <laughs> that <laughs> <But> is fair. <laughs> but yeah. after witnessing that. Yeah, and then put it on a matchup that he is very well experienced in. So this is going to be scary for the Charizard. Reads that, and yup. <laughs> that was quick. Um, yeah, as you're talking about before, um, the adaptation, the amount of uh, the importance of it as well. We noticed that the Charizard used Flare Bliss to recover a lot. I even noticed it just watching. So mm -hmm. they obviously took note of it and was able to use it to uh, get one of their stocks here with Keegan and Alex to be able to get a kill earlier. So yep, um, good to see the level of adaption there. Uh, yes. I'm trying to think about what I was going to say. Um, Keegan, I don't think he's missed a single down air today. Um, he has gotten a down air that was Sour Spot, but well, it sour did spot. still hit. It, it did still, still hit. hit. I'm so. not sure if that counts for half credit or not. Uh, I think we can give it half credit. It, we'll it wasn't it, half credit. it wasn't off stage, so okay. it, the spike wouldn't have killed anyway. So mm -hmm. you know, we'll give that we'll give that half credit. So so, so put 2.5 out of three. <laughs> yeah, he, he's missed half a down air, guys. <laughs> <laughs> tell him the score after. He'll I'm gonna be tell him that. I am. Excited. I will. Uh, afterwards, I'm gonna go. Your your down air counter today was a uh, 2.5 out of three, and he's probably gonna look at me like I'm a bit insane. But you know what? That's normal. Well, yes. <laughs> the entire and... Smash Bros team looks at you like you're a bit insane. Like I'm a bit insane, or because I'm a bit insane? I was just playing there, off what you were there, saying. There's a correlation there. <laughs> I was just playing off what you were saying. Correct, but yeah, we, we do have a bit of fun here. We, we, we like to be a bit goofy, a bit silly. So. Yes. But as we see here, we are coming into our next, our, uh, the final game. We do have three stocks on Keegan and three stocks on Chris, and this is Mount Union's last player. So quite a big lead for us, So and we are already up a match, so this is very much point. 
they have committed to the Pikachu now. They can't swap as uh, per crew battle rules. So this Pikachu is going to have to three stocks take six of ours One, to be able to bring this go. to a third game to even have a chance to win. But Keegan calling out the early aggression with a grab and already immediately 60%. Yes. <laughs> um, and Pikachu does not want that because he needs those combos in order to get up to the exact same amount of percentage. And um, just because Samus is a little bit heavier than Link, it is going to be a little bit more difficult for him to get percentage. Yep, but at the same time, um, Samus is quite a bit floatier than Link. So while that oftentimes can be uh, a bad thing, it also means you're, you can't, depending on the character, you can actually be, e you can be easier or harder to combo. Uh, because of your floatiness and Pikachu I believe is one of those that is actually harder to just because of how his moves link together and Keegan does take yep. one of his final three stocks while only taking 30 in retaliation so this is already a dire it was already a dire situation for the Pikachu but does manage to clip Keegan out of the upbeat with Nair those multi hits are so funky with the way they connect it gets the weirdest, weirdest angles just because of how the multi-hits are coded. Um, I, I've gone into it on other streams, but it is very weird interactions, but yeah, those lose stock. There's a lot of weird interactions in this game. <laughs> yep, there, there's a lot of strange ones. Um, I, I kind of pride myself on being able to understand them, but that doesn't mean they make sense. It just means I understand them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, this Pikachu has been, um, after that one, um, SD and actually, um, throwing damage onto a slightly even playing field, um, just based on this match alone, not encountering the entire Chris that we have lying in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I like the concept of the entire Chris. We, we just have him in a storage closet, just ready to pull him out whenever. But yeah, as, as you were saying, this Pikachu is keeping this stock a lot more even than the first stock. Mm -hmm. The first stock, we saw the Pikachu taking so much damage and eventually losing the stock while only dealing 30. But this one, the Pikachu actually has the percent lead. So a lot closer of a stock here. But mm -hmm. again, we have, a, we have a Chris after this Keegan. And uh, uh, Keegan is not exactly a pushover. So two stocks can get quite a di bit of distance if you let him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um... Using the um, that thunderbolt, I think it is um, mm -hmm. thunderjolt, something like that. Um, yeah, thunder, thunderjolt, uh, T jolt. Yeah, yeah, he's using that um, very nicely um, to get uh, Keegan out of his uh, charge attack, um, mm -hmm. or um, causing him to throw it out early, which is um, very good use of that. Yeah, Tijol is extremely strong. It is one of the best projectiles in the entire game um, because it, it travels along the ground, so it covers a lot of distance. It can also wrap around under the stage to gimp some people, but I'm not going to do too much against Samus, but it is a kind of slow-moving projectile that Pikachu can actually follow behind. So that pretty much forces you to either jump over the Tijol, which uh, Pikachu really wants you to do, as they can combo off of it, put you in shields, they can get grabs, or do some other niche character specific counter, but Teachel is extremely good at that. Yeah. Um, ignoring the fact that they are still quite even on this match, once again, ignoring Chris, um, the, there is a problem though, is that Pikachu seems to be having a hard time killing Samus, especially with the last stop, with um, Keegan getting up to 150% I believe around that number. Yep, that is a bit of a struggle of these combo characters that you can face. Um, you can get a lot of damage, but if your opponent is working around your kill confirms quite well, as Keegan is doing, it can be very difficult to find the kill. But Samus does not struggle with kill power very much, so that is not a worry that Keegan has to have very much. And this is quite an even a match, both at one stock, but again, this is Mount Union's last player, so this final stock is the final stock this is their match stock that they eventually have to take out uh, keegan's last stock here and an entire chris behind it so this is definitely a uh, definite uphill battle because even if they take out keegan here which is still going to be difficult as they are at high percent they have an entire chris the three stock afterwards yep um and chris is not very easy to three stock i don't think 
very many people have actually done that. <laughs> it is hard to beat Chris. It is even harder to three-stock Chris. And uh, this Pikachu is going to have to do that even after they get through this Keegan stock to be able to bring this to a match to a King 3. Yeah. And like I said, um, Pikachu is just having such a hard time even like killing Keegan at all. Um, barely living there with good DI and that's good. Kill. Yep, and nope, not quite. Never mind. <laughs> nice DI going straight to the corner, but we saw and again an example of the Pikachu being comfortable behind T Jolts. Uh, because it is such a good approach option, but charge shot goes through it, so it does go through it. Just barely doesn't kill. That was very surprising. It had to be yeah. almost perfect DI. And Pikachu dash attack, extremely good burst move. It covers a lot of distance, and of course it kills because Pikachu. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, Chris is going to have to play the video game. Dang it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. <laughs> you have to play the video game that you chose to compete in. <laughs> I don't know why, but he... Because he's good at it. <laughs> well, the thing is, he's just always like, oh, I hate this video game. I gotta play. Well, to like... be fair, we all do that. <laughs> we all hate the game we compete in. It's called Stockholm Syndrome. We're fine. <laughs> but... You know, I'm actually enjoying the game that I'm trying to compete in. Psh. Enjoying the game you compete in? That's not required. It's also very fun, because then that you stay true. up till 12 a.m. working on a new character, and then when you finally get into competitive with that character, you cry because you're actually not as good as you thought you were. I mean, I can do that here just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can do that in a lot of different games. <laughs> but, uh... But, like, you don't enjoy your practice either. I sometimes do. Sometimes my character functions which is why it's rare for me too <laughs> yes <laughs> yes because you like to complain that your character does not function well if you worked i wouldn't have to <laughs> well that's something you have to take up with sakurai true and number one i don't think you speak japanese and number two we are currently not in japan that's a minor detail <laughs> but you know who doesn't struggle with just picking up random new characters and just throwing them out there? Chris. Yup. <laughs> and that's who we're going to be seeing coming in as he is our last player. And uh, was it like there's like only one character that he said he would never bring out, and isn't that Diddy Kong or something? I mean, no. There's there's a few characters that he wouldn't bring out in competition, mm -hmm. but there is even less characters that he can't play at a competent <laughs> level. There are some characters that he can play fine, he just doesn't play well enough to compete with. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he has a surprisingly low number of those. <laughs> um, a lot lower than your average player. Your average player can play uh, competently at a competitive level. Like you have, your, you have your main, most people can generally have a secondary. <laughs> I thought Chris was going to throw it this way. Guys! <laughs> Guys, how long have we been doing this here? Come on! <laughs> Come on! Oh, Chris. Uh, since you guys can't see, um, we picked the stages. They did do stage bans, but then they just forgot to switch players, so Chris uh, Keegan just went in to play again. <laughs> so they had to back out. <laughs> I, nice. I, at first I thought Chris was just gonna play at Keegan's account as Samus, and I was just like, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, except for the fact that it's a rule that you can't have two of the same character. Ah, uh, yeah. You could just go Dark Samus, though. They're technically not the same. <laughs> technically not the same. Hey, you know, Dark Samus's up smash hits, like, a couple pixels higher because she floats instead of stands on the ground, so it, she deserves to be an Echo, guys. It, it, it needs to. There's technically a difference. Hee hee. Um, well, looking at this Pikachu, already taking 18%. Um, it seems like this Pikachu is a little bit more anticipating um, the Captain Falcon. Yeah, that, that is the danger here because while this can be fairly even uh, back and forth, mm -hmm. this Pikachu does only have one stock, so Chris yep. can actually afford to be a little little more loose, a little more risky with these stocks here, because just because of he has two to throw away before it's even even. Mm -hmm. 
So you can use those two to make some more risky plays than he might usually do just to get some damage. But does get caught in a Pikachu combo, but not actually much damage. Those multi hits don't do a huge amount of damage when you launch it. Unfortunately, uh, Pikachu, well, unfortunately for the Pikachu, they did miss that disconnect right over there. Um, but still kind of just chilling at the 42% range. But that is not what you want to take into a three stock against one stock match. <laughs> yep, all this percent you see here as it is the last talk, all this percent is effectively permanent. They have to keep this percent. And Chris doing a good job of saving his jump there does get back to the stage here. So really, again, all Chris needs to do is just rack up damage. He can make some risky plays because he has two stocks to work with. Make some, make some risky plays, go for some reads, get some damage here, and then use the last one to kill if you even need to, because he might kill beforehand. Yeah, um, Chris is getting very close to losing his first stock, but it's only his first. Mm -hmm. It is only his first, and he has 70% racked up on Pikachu's last. So, this is a good position to be in, although it does look like he's behind. If you look at the stock count, it does tell a little bit of a different story there. Yes, he is currently quite ahead, um, and he doesn't uh, need to worry. Man, that was so close to killing because of the yes. rage that Chris has. Uh, not just in person, but also in the game, being at max rage here. Yes. Wolf smash attacks are going to kill very strongly against a high percent Pikachu. Those smash attacks are strong on their own, give them range on a light character, and oh man. At first, I thought you said range, and I was like, uh... They do have a surprising amount of range, too. That I'm actually like, is true. I'm just like, uh, is Chris gonna start beating up this, uh, beating up someone in the background? I don't know what's happening. I mean, we, I mean, we don't know what's happening in that side room when oh, we're in here that. commentating, but drop down from Halo Platform F tilt does catch the Pikachu's drop off ledge there, so gets yep. the kill. Didn't need the other stock, but. Nice cleanup from Chris coming out with the wolf as we do normally see the cat mm -hmm. and falcon. So, closing out that match there with a pretty clean 2-0. The second round was a lot stronger than the first round as well. So, solid improvement there throughout. Yep. Um, very good um, playing from everyone, both sides, including Mount Union. Um, we are going to cut uh, now just because um, before the next game. I'm not sure if we're playing any other games today. Uh, yes, don't forget that uh, actually later, um, pretty much fairly after this, I believe it's pretty close. Um, we actually have another Gleck match. It will be the last one of the season. We have a double header today. So don't forget to tune in for that. We, that should be coming up pretty dang shortly. So we are going to cut the stream here, as mentioned earlier, take a bit of a break, but we will see you guys then. And uh, I will come back. <laughs> okay, well, I will see you guys then. And uh, I will. See you then. Enjoy his pit tangents. <laughs>